Good morning, Victory Life Fellowship and everyone else that's tuning in this morning again to a, a broadcast from our wonderful office here in Kelowna. It happens to be the coldest day of the year so far. Hopefully I can warm your hearts with some revelation from the Word of God and uh, get you on your way this morning. I want to talk to you about being fully persuaded. It's so important to be uh, fully persuaded in the things of God because we do that in other things. We are fully persuaded in the natural or else you probably wouldn't sit down in a chair. You'd have to investigate the chair before you'd ever sit down before uh, sitting on it because you would not be sure if that would hold you. You know, Well, some of the cheaper products, you know, I wouldn't even sit down even if, if, if I thought it would. And then, uh, of course, uh, an airplane, you would never ever think of getting into an airplane if you were not fully persuaded that that pilot would be able to um, take you up and down the runway and bring you back home safely. Not, would you? So we want to make sure that uh, when it comes to spiritual matters, because it's going to be a missing link in our spiritual walk if we are not fully persuaded in the things of the spirit, and uh, we need to be. And we get there is a process to it, and it's very simple. That uh, I want to encourage you. So I'm going to go through a few scriptures. For for example, the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter eight, he says, "For I am persuaded beyond doubt." I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things impending or threatening or things to come or no powers, no height, no depth, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Wow, that is so cool to be that persuaded that because, again, remember, as we shared on Sunday, that he had the most opposition of anybody. He was in charge of writing two-thirds of the New Testament, so obviously he's going to have a lot of opposition. And uh, again, I'll give you the, the, the cure for um, a lack of persuasion. It's very simple. It's just loading yourself with the Word of God. But I'm going to give you nine different areas. We're not going to get through it all today. Where and what we um, would need to be fully persuaded in to, uh, to be effective. We may be sort of persuaded, but we got to be fully persuaded. You know, as a pastor, again, I've gone through a lot of um, years hearing people, they weren't sure if God loved them. Um, they just weren't sure. The scriptures were not uh, rooted and grounded in their hearts on the love of God or shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Spirit. That uh, John 3.16, he loved the whole world. Um, and so a lot of these scriptures would have made a difference in their life. But uh, they, they were not fully developed, just like it's, again, it's related to spiritual activity uh, and physical activity. It's the same thing. They were not fully exercised in their, um, in their scriptures. So therefore, there was a lack of effect concerning being fully persuaded. Well, there's another guy here in just a few chapters back in Romans chapter 4 that also needed to be fully persuaded. And he became fully persuaded and I'm going to start there today in Romans chapter 4, where it says in verse 21, it says, fully satisfied and assured. It doesn't use the word persuaded, but it's just a, a, an acronym of it. But he was fully satisfied and assured that God was able and mighty to keep his word. And so how did he get there? His opposition um, was so intense, thinking of Sarah, who was well beyond the years of having a child, uh, you know, so old. E everything that he ever looked at, he looked at um, his own body and he said, no, you know, I, how can this be? But something on the inside spoke to him. Of course, obviously back then they didn't have uh, the Holy Spirit the way we do, but he knew and he heard the voice of God and he knew that he knew that he knew that he knew that God meant business when he said that you're going to populate the whole earth you're going to have a you know the seed of Jesus coming through you eventually um, and so he took it at his word and again does it matter if if uh, you're walking on water does it matter uh, what the situation is here was a lady that was way too old to have children and he was way too old nothing's working physically understand there is no pill he could take there was nothing they could do to exercise the ability that was needed to have children but they exercised the word of god so um i'm, I'm glad the bible talks about stuff like this because they're not just saying 
uh, a simple how do we overcome a little headache they're going right for the you know for impossible situations but he says this is what he says he says no distrust no unbelief made him waver or doubtingly question concerning the promise of God there was nothing shaking him now again I guarantee you well I know from the Word of God God approached him a second time because he was shaken he was distrusting he was you know in a position where he looked for a handmaiden to help him and that's what he did they they both reasoned together saying well maybe God will bless you through the handmaiden but that was not God's plan but they did it anyways and they they had well we had, we had trouble ever since because of what he decided to do but think about it God had to come a second time say Abraham Abram, he says, I'm going to call you Abraham, father of many nations. And so he came down a second time and he fixed that doubting situation. So be encouraged. If you were doubting up to now about a certain situation, be like an Abraham. He wasn't perfect. He failed for 24 years approximately. Uh, when, when it didn't happen, didn't happen, didn't happen. Oh, I guess, I guess we'll have to try something else. And so he finally, finally um, heard the voice of God a second time. Or God approached him a second time and changed his name so that in his name was father of many nations so he'd go to the hardware store and somebody says hey how come you change your name to Abraham and oh that means father of many nations yeah but you got no kids what's going on see the the word went in and the word came out of his mouth before he ever saw the first child so that's what's so important to remember here today being fully persuaded so be encouraged. If you've wavered along the way, um, we can fix that, or God can fix that. You get to fix it. So let's say yesterday you doubted healing. Well, don't doubt anymore. You doubted your salvation. Don't doubt it anymore. You know, I'm coming to you with a fresh word today. Be fully persuaded. Be fully persuaded on these nine principles. Are you ready? All right. So again, we see the importance of persuasion. Oh, may, my, might I add that this is what he did. Let me go back to this. Um, it says that he had no doubt, no unbelief. This is verse 20 of, of Romans chapter 4. No doubt, unbelief made him waver, doubtingly question concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong. Are you interested to find out how he grew strong? Let's look at it. And was empowered by faith as he praised and gave glory to God. So there's a key. As he gave praise and glory to God. Praise God. Walking around your living room. Thank you, Lord. You know, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, speaking the word of God. As he, uh, he grew strong, as he gave praise, and his faith grew in that. So uh, you're giving praise, uh, as we shared last week out of Psalm 34. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will be continually in my mouth. That's one of the first things, the best things to do, to get God on the scene and fill yourself with the word of God. That's how he overcame his trouble situation. So number one, are you ready? There's nine things that I believe you need to be fully persuaded about. Number one would be this here. God's power and his willingness to use it. God's power and his willingness to use it. And I'm going to go to Romans chapter 1 with that. Verse 16. For it says this here. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Christ. For it is the power of the power of God working unto salvation for deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal uh, trust. So that's, you know, that is so important. The word of God is actually the power. The word is the power. This is not, even though it looks like a normal book, it looks like, you know, ink on a paper. The real story is what it is made of. It is breathed out by God. Every word is profitable. It is good for you to be used. It is seed that is sown into your heart. So understand what it is that we are doing when we go into the Word of God. It is, pro it is the power. So maybe, um, you know, you read for the first time, all through his stripes were healed. Maybe you're even half disinterested. Maybe you're, yeah, I, well, I guarantee you, you will be threat, threatened from the enemy with thoughts and scriptures that, 
uh, or, or uh, not scriptures, but his, his perverted version of scriptures. Well, you know, you never know what God's going to do or his ways are higher than your ways. Uh, those are scriptures, but they're perverted by him. He'll come with, seem, I mean, he's the most church going dude around. He'll come with so much discouragement that you will talk yourself out of a healing. Say, so, well, you know, I know my uncle believed that and he wasn't healed. But did he take... The word of God, which is the gospel power unto salvation. Did he build himself up on his most holy faith? We just don't know. See, this is personal here. This is the personal link in the chain that you got to make sure is strong. Because he said, the word of God said, and that's the mind of Christ in all wisdom and understanding. He said, the word of God is, or the gospel, the good news is the power of unto salvation. So God's power and his willingness to use it. So again, then we can break it down and say, well, what about, uh, does God want to save my family? Absolutely. Well, find scriptures. Does God want to uh, cause me to uh, be able to pay my bills? Absolutely. We'll find the scriptures on that. Because that mind of God and the book that we have here called the Bible, which is really the thoughts and the intents and the purposes of God's heart, is to be coming off these pages into your heart. I was thinking the other day, you know, we put a lot of emphasis, and I agree, um, to, we got to read the Word every day. So I agree, but what if you didn't have a Bible for a day? Oh no, you're going to start backsliding? No, 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 no. Wait a minute, the Word of God is already written in your heart, and it's good to, obviously it's good to read it every day, but what if I didn't have the Bible on a certain day? or an opportunity while I carry it around in my heart. I can bring up scriptures any time of the day. And the bigger, biggest part, let's put it that way, bigger than even reading it, is meditating there in day and night, day and night. Then you will make your way prosperous. So let's say you were on a desert island, you didn't have your, I wish to be on a desert island right now, it's so cold out. If you were on a desert island and you didn't have the Bible with you, you could quote the Psalm 23. You could quote the 34th Psalm. Why? We covered it already. You can quote uh, Romans chapter 4. And you could, you could just bring it up. Bring up any scripture that the Holy Spirit wants you to. And it is, has the same effect. Even more so, if it's meditated on, it has a better effect than just reading. Because sometimes we just get under that pressure. We've got to read, got to read, got to read. So are you sure? That God's, this is number one, God's power and his willingness to use it in every situation. He wants to obviously save you, John 3, 16. He came down not to condemn you. There was a perfect plan to have your wineskin be reborn and to deliver you from all sin, sickness, and disease. And so that is power. I'll tell you what, the Bible tells me that I'm translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. There's a lot of power there that did that. It, it took, I couldn't save myself, it took the power of the living Christ, Jesus my Lord, to deliver me from the power of darkness and to translate me into the kingdom of his dear son. No demon in hell has power that can stop that process. Not even the devil himself. He cannot cause you to fail spiritually unless you let him in. And so we don't want his ability working in our lives. We want God's ability in our lives. He has given us the power in the gospel unto salvation. So be sure that there's power. There is power to heal. There's power, power, power. Say that with me. There is power in the name of Jesus. Say this with me. There's power in the gospel right now. There is tremendous power. And you can write down Ephesians 1 verse 19. talks about the same thing the power of God that was available to us who believe. And so number two is this here, his love. Never, ever, in fact, I feel led to go there because not everybody might know how awesome the scripture is in John chapter 3, verses 16. You say, well, I know that. Well, see, that's sometimes what happens. We know it so, so well, we think, John 16 and 17, that we lose the effectiveness of, of that scripture as to working in our lives. John 3.16 obviously says, For God so greatly loved. I like the word in the Amplified, greatly loved. It wasn't just a side thought. So, and he dearly prized the world, 
that he even gave up his only begotten unique son. Boy, there's a study right there. What it took to set you free. Not only did he have power, but he had love for you. So much love that he gave up his best, his best to save you. I'll tell you what, don't just read this one. Meditate on this one. How do I meditate? Why do you just keep thinking about over and over? He gave up his unique son. He was with him in heaven. Then he prepared a body for him that he could become man. So he was a God man that identified with us. And he went and took all our punishment to the cross. You can almost have a movie like a movie playing in your mind. That's what it meant. Go back to the beginning and said he gave up his son, his only unique son, so that I could um, I could believe on him. And I can, you could see him walking to the, you know, to to Golgotha, carrying that big cross and all my sins were laid on him. That is intense love. If I was the only one, he loved me so much that he would have done that. What else does it say? He gave us his only begotten son so that whosoever believes and trusts and clings to us to on him shall not perish or come to destruction be lost but have eternal everlasting everlasting life by what believing on his son call on the name of the lord and you shall be saved that's how great his love is sometimes i get so irritated with some people that that uh, they post on facebook and they have this picture of hell and you know really what they're using is the principle of the uh, of you know they want everybody to know that there's a real hell and there's pictures of hell and i just want to write sometimes saying where is the love of god ever in this we know there's a hell we want people to be saved why not bring them the good news gospel so they can be saved then let the holy spirit clean them and not just threaten them you know you're going to hell you're going to hell you're going to hell that <clears throat> That, that has such a, you know, and then they don't give the, the how to get away from it. Other than better repent. Well, how about first believe on the Son, Jesus Christ, that he set you free. Believe that he set you free. If you're an addiction of any kind, if you're any kind of person, everybody needs to have that same process. And it's the goodness of God that will lead people to repentance. Not pictures of hell and you're going there and, you know, often I get threatened as a pastor, you should preach more on hell. You know, I would just like to say to those people, you need to preach more on heaven. Preach more on the goodness of God that leads to repentance. We all know there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. But the fear gospel will never, ever uh, get people to cross the line into heaven and, um, and to, uh, by the love of God. That's what he, what he wants to bring into everybody's life. So be sure of his love. I want to read verse 17 too. For God did not send his own son into the world in order to judge, to reject, to condemn, to pass sentence. Can you imagine that? Even the worst sinner, you put into your mind the worst sinner, Jesus came not to judge him, to condemn him, to pass a sentence on him or the world. So was it just the good sinners? Which ones did he not want to judge, reject, or condemn, or pass sentence to? That's my point with all these people that keep preaching so much about hell and so forth. He wanted you to experience my point number two, the love of God, which will lead to repentance. That, uh, that you know, nobody can clean themselves. That presence of the Holy Spirit that comes in when you accept his love through his son Jesus Christ now the Holy Spirit um, speaks to you he leads and guides you into all truth he leads you and guides you to cleanliness and holiness everybody that's born again truly born again desires holiness and is ashamed of their past life and uh, in fact the Bible encourages the Apostle Paul says, who had so much baggage, he said, forget that which lays behind and press on to the mark of the high calling. So if anybody had baggage and, and should have just thought, man, I'm going to hell, it was the Apostle Paul. But uh, what a glorious salvation. And the same Jesus that saved him says, I'm not here. He saved the world in, not to judge, to reject, to condemn, to pass sentence on the world. But 
that the world might find salvation and be made safe and sound through him. Hallelujah. What a glorious scripture. What a glory is right from the lips of our, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, through John. Uh, what a glorious, glorious gospel that is. So number one, be sure about his power and his willingness to use it in every situation. Number two, be sure of his love. Number three is very important too. Be sure of the Father's character. Again, I shared this on Sunday. The quality goes in before the name goes on. In John 10, 10, it states clearly, the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. Every time you see those three, steal, kill, and destroy. It's never our Heavenly Father. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Not just in heaven. He came. So he left heaven. He came to give you life and life more abundantly. Life more abundantly. Not just exist. You know, a lot of people just exist. Even as Christians, barely getting by, existing, whatever. But he came to give us life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Well, I just basically touched three of these areas that are so important. I hope you recognize the voice of God. It's always comforting. It's always gentle. He says, my sheep hear my voice, the voice of a stranger, that harsh, you know, that mean thing. Well, well that's not God. What he wants and what is effective in your life is the true gospel. It leads to holiness. It eats, leads to right living. And I hope that's what everybody wants for people, but it's just their process is sometimes wrong. I want to make sure that you are fully persuaded of his love. I know people that are... Uh, don't know the character of God and think that he's he's like a big guy with a big stick in heaven and that he will just every time they miss it boom boom he hits on the head that's not God and so I hope I've uh, helped you a little bit today anyways God bless you have an amazing day today and we'll see you next week